What's up YouTube? It's James Q. Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. And today I want to show you how I moved Learn, Build, Teach from WordPress to a static site. Before we get started, if you haven't already, you should check out learnbuildteach.com where you can subscribe to my newsletter to get the latest updates in web development design and tools. All right, so I just recently went through a fairly big migration in my mind of the learnbuildteach.com website. Uh, and originally it was on WordPress and it was using a theme, let me come over here to some links, using a theme called Divi, which has a visual builder uh, built in, which is actually really cool. And so I went, I went this route because I thought it would be the quickest and easiest way to one, get websites up, add functionality to websites, and then have it be drag and drop and uh, WordPress back in so that uh, clients, for example, or someone else could come in and make changes to websites if I built them from someone else or if I had someone helping me with the site. And I, I kind of, after a little while, just kind of realized that this was overhead for what I wanted to do. As a web developer, one, I wanted more control over what I was doing than Divi let me have. Uh, I also had to spend a lot of time kind of learning the ins and outs of the Divi Builder to build things that would have been significantly easier to build myself. Uh, there was also a lack of kind of reusability. The way I would do like classes and uh, things like that in CSS, I kind of struggled to get that implemented in Divi. So there were several different things that I really struggled with. Again, Divi is a great theme. They've got great plugins. Uh, it was great for what I was doing, but I got to a point where I really wanted more control. And I really struggle with the workflow in WordPress because it's it's hard to, you don't really have everything tied into source control because you're dependent upon a database. And so I was doing these migrations of basically copying the entire, the entire website and database in one migration from local to production or from production back to local if I had made some uh, extraneous changes out there in production. So there were a couple of different reasons why I wanted to migrate from WordPress and just kind of being in the web development community, I heard more and more about static site generators and I heard more people that I respect talk about them and I was seeing people saying how they had done migrations and how they were awesome and blah, blah, blah. So I decided to really dive in and take a look at a couple of different ones. And just for reference for you guys, if you're curious, uh, you can check out Static Gen for a list of a ton of different, uh, ton of different static site generators. Jekyll, Next, Hugo, and Gatsby are definitely four of the, the more popular ones, and they've got some other ones down here as well. So I decided to go with Gatsby, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, but before we get to that, I just wanna kinda touch on, my website is pretty simple. Uh, so just to show you guys one more time, there's not a whole lot going on here uh, as of now. There's a couple of buttons, uh, a couple of different sections here, links to some courses that I've got that you guys should check out as well, and then a newsletter sign up, which I'll talk about more at the end. So you might notice one thing that's missing here is that I didn't have any blog posts. There was no there was no blog aspect of it, which was another reason why WordPress was a little bit overkill for me because WordPress is great for that sort of thing, but I wasn't taking advantage of that. So uh, a lot of people, if you're looking at migrating from WordPress to a uh, static site generator, you might need to uh, migrate your blog posts as well. So with static site generators, a lot of them use Markdown as kind of the format for your data. You can think of it as like blog posts or any other, any other thing you want to use it for, blog posts or events or classes, for example. Uh, you can store those in Markdown files and they actually get checked into your source control. So at any point, I can grab the source, the source code for my project and deploy it anywhere I need to with a static site generator and it will work. That was a whole lot better process than I had in, uh, in WordPress. So with that, to get started, I needed to uh, first come up with a design. So I've got a sketch design somewhere. Sorry if I'm making you nauseous from scrolling over. Let me close this one, that'll give me one less, and then scroll over to sketch. So here was the, the redesign. You notice that this looks pretty much like what you just saw. So uh, I worked on you know a mobile version here, a mobile version with the, uh, the, the menu opened up. All this looks pretty much the same. You basically have this horizontal uh, layout for Learn, Build, Teach, and then you stack it on top of each other to be vertically, which I did with uh, Flexbox. And then we got a featured content section here, a start learning, uh, and notice that these are using some dummy images here because uh, I didn't really feel the need to swap out all of the images, but this part over here looks pretty good, except for it's reusing the same text. But this was kind of the, the look and feel that I wanted to go for, and then same thing down here. So, uh, and actually a section that I didn't get 
uh, added yet is a let's get social, just kind of uh, a way for you guys to contact me and reach out and stuff like that. So this is the design. Again, pretty simple, pretty simple uh, website. Uh, overkill to use WordPress, decided to go with static site generators. Uh, one thing to know is right now I've got uh, these class, these courses basically hard coded into the application, the, the, the titles and the names, or the titles and descriptions and the images. Uh, eventually I want to actually read those from Markdown. So it's not a big jump to do that, I just haven't done it yet, so it's something I need to work on. So with that, uh, I decided to go with Gatsby.js. Uh, Gatsby uses React. I've been getting more into React in my personal time. I don't use it at work, but in my spare time, I love React. Uh, it's super popular. People in the community uh, are talking about React constantly. Uh, it seems to be much more popular in kind of the open source, kind of modern web community than Angular is, which is what I use at work. Angular is a bit more like enterprise-y type thing. So I decided to go with Gatsby, which lets me leverage React. There's lots of cool things that come with Gatsby. Uh, so after choosing Gatsby, I needed to one, create a, a GitHub repository for my site. So I've got uh, under James Q Quick, I've got the learn, build, teach site. Uh, you guys, if you want to, can come to the link here. And uh, I've got a bunch of Ga Gatsby config stuff in here and then also a source folder. And if I come into components, for example, you can look at the, let's see, the hero. I don't actually know how that stuff got, I don't know how that stuff actually got highlighted red or why, but anyway, there it is. So you can see here's the, the kind of the, the learn, build, teach items here. So I built a hero item component and then a hero uh, overall component. Anyway, a couple of different React components. You guys can look through this if you're curious. Uh, and then there's one thing that's uh, specifically interesting here is this functions folder, which I'll come back to later on. And I haven't updated the readme, which is something I should do as well. So with the, um, with the decision to use Gatsby and uh, having written out my components and gotten the, the basic site ready, I, did, I needed a place to host it and I went for Netlify. And Netlify is something I've done several videos on recently that I've raved about. I love Netlify. It's an amazing host and an amazing host specifically for static sites. Uh, static sites and then sites that are generated using static site generators if that makes sense. Uh, so I've got a couple videos you guys can check out getting started with Netlify and then uh, deploying your first site, building Lambda functions, which we'll talk about in a second. So basically the way this works is I did a new site from Git, I connected my site to this repository right here, and every time, let's come back here, every time that I push to my master branch, a build happens, which takes, uh, it does a Gatsby build, gets all the files optimized and ready to go, and pushes them out there live on learnbuildteach.com. So a couple of the amazing things about this, that continuous deployment, it's all automatic. As soon as I push to a branch, it goes live. Uh, also on here, uh, notice I'm using a custom domain and a lot of host providers, that's not free to be able to, to do. So Netlify, they actually use your custom domain for free. So I'm not paying anything on Netlify yet, uh, which is pretty sweet. So I got my website hosted and I decided there's one feature that I had left to kind of figure out how to do. And it was handling newsletter uh, subscribes on my website, so let's pull it back up again. At the very bottom here, I've got a button and a little form for you guys to sign up to the newsletter to learn about web development design and tools. And uh, the one thing I struggle with here is on MailChimp, which is what I use for my email list, you can include basically a script and they do everything for you and you don't really have control over like what the form looks like and things like that, and I didn't really like that. So I wanted to go a route where I would uh, handle posting to the MailChimp API myself directly. So I went through the MailChimp API documentation, I figured out how to format a call to uh, my list, a post to my list using an API key and add a subscriber that way. So I needed, I didn't wanna do that from the front end directly, so I wanted a something on the server to be able to handle that. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. So with static sites, you don't actually have a server, but this is where functions come into play with Netlify that are really cool. So functions are serverless functions or Lambda functions. Lambda is the more specific AWS implementation of serverless functions. And these are basically one-off functions that can get triggered and you can do whatever you want with them inside of that function. So if we look into the functions directory, I've got a subscribe JS function. And inside of this is where I can call it. And then inside of that call with an email, I come through and I create the, the URL to post to for my MailChimp and I go ahead and post it. 
And up here, I do some validation beforehand. So I validate that, uh, that it looks like a real email and then go ahead and send that through to the MailChimp API. So when you include a functions directory and anything inside of a functions directory gets picked up by, by Netlify and hosted as a Lambda function, which is pretty, pretty sweet. So this gives you the ability to add some backend server functionality without really having to maintain a server yourself. So this is one of the many very cool features of Netlify, one of the reasons that I'm in love with it. It's amazing, it's great, tons of free uh, options that you can use and other things. So you can check out a couple of my other videos on Netlify if you're interested. So I think that is gonna wrap up what this was like for me. So again, I think this was, this was a fun project for me. It gave me a reason to kind of dive into uh, static sites. I hadn't really done that before. I kept hearing about them, heard how they were great and blah, blah, blah. It gave me a reason to work with static sites. It gave me a reason to host with Netlify, to work on Lambda functions with Netlify, to work with the MailChimp API. And even all of that said, I've still got some things that I wanna add one is I mentioned before is these uh, these courses are hard coded right now. I want to get those loaded in for markdown files so that as I add more courses, I just add the new markdown file and don't have to change any of my uh, my markup. Right, the markup stays the same and it just loads in the courses from the courses director. Or, yeah, courses directory of markdown files basically. So another thing I want to do, I want to display my recent YouTube videos on here. I don't really know how I'm going to go about doing that. I'm always looking to make things look a little nicer, neater, more designy. Uh, I'm not a designer by trade, but I'm, I feel like I'm getting a little bit better. I'm really happy with the design here, so I think this looks pretty good. But, you know, there's always things that you can change and do better at. And then uh, another thing uh, I noticed, or you might have noticed in that design and sketch, that I had a, a section here for basically like a contact. So I want to get that back in, and I want to figure out uh, the best way to do that for you guys to get in touch with me. Now there's uh, social links down here that you guys can find me on uh, Facebook and Twitter in the meantime. So last thing is I've got two other sites that I'm potentially gonna migrate to Gatsby. One is my personal site, jamesqquick.com, and the other, actually can't remember right offhand what it is, but I've, I will potentially be doing a couple of different migrations. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope this was kind of interesting for you guys. I really wanted to share with you something a little bit more personal about my development and the things that I have going on. So I'm curious, have you guys gone through any big migrations recently? Have you moved to a new host? Have you tried any new platforms recently? Whether it's a small project or something new at work or whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. So if you've done any of those things, leave a comment uh, below. I'd love to hear what you guys are working on and maybe some of the things that you've learned in your migration uh, in the past. So that's going to that's gonna wrap up this video. I really appreciate you guys hanging out and watching and listening to a little more personal dev experience here. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and you can check out my newsletter on learnbuildteach.com to get updates on the latest content as it comes out. Thanks for watching.